Hi, this is what it looks like. It is a tutorial to Foxhole, and uh, today is the absolute basics. And it's going to be shown in a warden uniform because unfortunately, I'm a warden scum. Anyway, uh, when making this, I wasn't quite sure where to start, right? Uh, but I figured probably a good idea to give the basic of when you die, what happens, right? When you die, you respawn at a spawn point where you set your spawn. Now you might ask me, how the fuck do I do that? This little icon here, that sets your spawn point to be this specific building. <clears throat> the buildings you can spawn in is bunker bases, forward operation bases, uh, town, can't call it town halls anymore. It's the old name. I think it's like town centers or town, town command posts something like that recently changed the name and i've played it for so long where it's just been town hall so please forgive me uh anyway set your spawn there by clicking this button any place that has the button you can set your spawn and respawn there the only requirement for spawning is that the spawn point that you have have enough shirts shirts is slang for soldier supplies which is a supply that can be submitted to spawn points and every time someone spawns there it reduces by one that's the basics. Moving on, you have submitting items to the stockpile. Now, this is only a picture of the stockpile, but on the left-hand side of this, you'll see an inventory. In that inventory, there can be items. Those items are submitted when you hit this button. The next button is submitting your starter items. Your starter items is items like your pistol and your hammer. Clicking this button submits all of it in one go. And then you have this button, which is basically submit large item. Won't go into this a lot because at this point you'll have friends who can teach you how to do it. So don't worry about that. Then how do you get a weapon? Have this big list and you just click on what you want, right? If you hover over the item, it'll show you some useful information about it and also what ammo type it uh, takes and what damage type it does, right? Um, the ammo for a weapon will always be the next item after the weapon. So you can see here the sniper and the ammo for the sniper is right after it. And it's the same for the top left item, which is a storm rifle, then it's storm rifle ammo. Then you have to do pistols, it's pistol ammo. Even for consumables, it's the same. You have bandages, right next to the bandages is the first aid kit. And it's the first aid kit that uses bandages to heal people. It's really simple. Moving on from this, equipping this, so you have your own inventory, which is your backpack. You have to equip the item from your backpack into your um, equipment slots. These are labeled as one, two, and three in this picture here, and that is because the top one is your one key, the middle is your second key, and the third is your third key. Super simple, makes sense. Anyway, you equip your sniper or whatever other weapon you have, to the primary slot, does that automatically, you just click the picture. It's preset where it goes, right? So you can't choose it yourself, unfortunately. And primary weapons always go in slot one and secondary weapons always go in slot two. <laughs> Moving on, we have the chat function. I just wanted to visit this because there's a lot of people who don't know how to change their chat setting. And you just hit enter to open up and be able to type and you use tab to switch channels. And it says it right there, but it's just so many people who don't read it or just forget. If there are small breaks where there's no sign at all, that is because I'm coughing my lungs out because I've just been sick. Anyway, moving on to how you actually use your weapons and the stuff you have in your inventory. You right click to aim your weapon once you have it equipped and you left click to shoot. You cannot fire a weapon without already aiming it. And you hold the right mouse button. You don't click it. It's not a toggle. You hold it. <clears throat> if you left click without having aimed, you will, if you have it equipped, use the bayonet instead. That's all there is to it. Then we move on to cover. This game has implemented cover. It's a bit dumbed down for this game but essentially if you're standing next to an object that could provide cover it gives you a level of cover 
I believe there's about four levels of cover, but most of the time you will actually get full cover, even though it wouldn't make a lot of sense. But just, just roll with it. Full cover is nice. Essentially, what you have to imagine is that there is a force field around you in that direction, and you have to shoot enough bullets at that force field before they actually hit you, even though they would hit you otherwise. It does not make sense, but it's just a magic shield. The only thing that can bypass cover is a sniper that is exactly lined up, and usually this would also require a headshot. So it, just go for a cover if you don't want to die, and cover uh, outside of making you not die also helps you with stabilization. Another thing that does that is your stance. This is how you change your stance and the keys for it. Being prone obviously gives you the most um, stabilization of your weapons. And stabilization is a combination of your cover and your stance, right? But if you go prone, like you can't improve much from there. Going prone is, you, you stabilize really fast. But if you're standing up and you go into cover, it, it pretty much doubles your stabilization time. So that's super useful. Cover is super nice for a lot of stuff surprisingly for no one anyway um moving on from how you are infantry i think we should look a bit at how you do vehicles right so first of all we're going to look at how you go into a vehicle these are just the basic keys for entering and driving is just as moving your character otherwise this is the inventory of a drum and spitfire which is a warden vehicle but it's just to show you how inventories of vehicles work you have slots just like any other inventory, um, <clears throat> and these are these slots. They vary from vehicle to vehicle. This specific one just has three, and it can take anything. The <laughs> storm rifle ammo that I have here is because the Spitfire uses storm rifle ammo for its light machine gun. Next up. This icon lets you lock the vehicle, so it's only you who can enter and exit it. Well, actually, you can always exit it, but you're the only one who can enter it. You're the only one who can access the inventory. You're the only one who can do anything, actually. Uh, this next two lets you change that. System, the game has a squad system. Uh, joining a squad, if you lock your vehicle and you hit this icon next to it, anyone who's in your squad can also access your vehicles. This is super useful if you have a, an operation going on or you're playing with your friends. One thing though, you have to be three people in the same region to use this feature, but once you have that, it's super useful. <laughs> Next icon here is to do with fuel. Um, if you hit this, item, this icon here, it automatically refills the fuel if there is a fuel source nearby. And a fuel source is stuff like a fuel tanker or yeah, I guess we still haven't gotten stationary fuel uh, fuel depots. It, literally only the fuel truck. But it's super useful because often people just park fuel trucks for public use and you can just go up, hit the icon, and it you know fills up automatically. Otherwise, you have to go get diesel and pour it in and stuff like that. Next to here, you can change what type of fuel it takes. There are two fuel types, diesel and petrol. And the only difference is it goes slightly faster on petrol. It's not even a lot. Like, there's no reason to run petrol, guys. If you're just playing casual, you don't have to do petrol. Don't even worry about it. The last item here is packaging the vehicle. When you package it, it gets this little plate under it, and this makes you able to pick it up with a crane. And essentially, it's, it's for shipping purposes. And I'll get into this in a later video about logistics. But just know that this button packages the vehicle. <clears throat> just a quick demonstration about how you switch seats and how you use the gun. Then we have logistics, really basic logistics. You get scrap or salvage from these nodes that look like this. On the map, it looks like a bolt. You get salvage in your inventory and that salvage, you take that to a refinery. If you go to the map and you hover over the icons, they um, display what it is 
So you can just hover over all the icons and get familiar with them. The one that's called a uh, <clears throat> refinery looks like this in the inventory. So here you can see that I got a bit of salvage, put it in my transport truck. The next thing I do is that I hit this icon. You see there's three, that's because the different icons, depending on which one you click, makes the three different items on the right. If you shift left mouse button, you just take everything in your inventory and submit it to that specific category. <laughs> Here you can see that slowly it tickle, uh, trickles over on the right side. Right side is then finished materials. And then there's a timer for when everything will be finished. What you can see here is the row that's in the middle, that is your private production. That's what you have produced and it's private for you. No one else can see this. On the right side, that is public. So that's just, you know, someone made something public or there's past two days. Like you can only have something private for two days if you don't add anything to it. So two days might have passed, it might have gone over to public, all that stuff. Right side is public. You can take however much you want, or you can just don't like not give a fuck and just let it be there. Whatever you want, it's free game, essentially. <clears throat> Moving on, when you retrieve this, it's really important that you right click and click retrieve as crates, because this keeps your private lock on them, making you able to put it into C ports and stuff like that. Basically, clans do this, private people do this, who do a lot of logistics, or if you want to save these, if you just left click, you can't save them. You have to use them immediately or give them to the public stockpile, basically. And then they show up in your truck inventory like this. <laughs> Moving on. How do you use these crates? Um, if you have them created, you go to a seaport or a storage depot where you can right click on them and either submit them all to the stockpile. This is where it's important that you have them uh, private, right? So you right clicked earlier and retrieve them as crates because then you can submit them to a private stockpile. Otherwise, you can submit them to the public stockpile. <laughs> the public stockpile is the one that just opens up when you open the seaport normally. You can also right click them and unpack material crates. This only works on material crates. You can't do this with rifles and ammo and stuff like that. But basic materials, refined materials, explosive materials, everything that is a material type, a production item, can be unpacked. Right? So this is where you do that. Then you get them in the basic form, which is the unpacked form like this. The second you do this, if they were private before, they are now public. <clears throat> then you can take your BMATs to a factory or a vehicle depot, which is now a garage. And here you can essentially use them to make pretty much anything you want so far as you have the required materials. Damn, talking this much really gets my coughing going. I'm sorry. All of these breaks must be super annoying. <laughs> anyway, in this example, I have made uh, 0.44 revolver ammo, and then they show up on the right side. You can, at max, make four crates of the same uh, category, but you can mix it. So I could have done like two revolver ammo and two rifle ammo. I could have done revolver ammo, revolver, rifle ammo, and rifle. Whatever floats your boat, but you can only make four crates at once per category. After you've done this and you hit the play arrow, you will then get a time before it's done and an option to cancel. When the time's gone, you get this check mark, and hitting that check mark puts them in your inventory. And now you're essentially done with your logistics. So that's that's the basics of Foxhole, really. Now you know how to grab a gun and set your spawn so you can go and kill people and not have your uh, progress entirely reset because you traveled in from another region. You know the basics of making the guns that you're shooting with and how to get the materials, how to refine it, even how to store it. And uh, well, 
that means you're pretty much set to go out there and either be a lodgy man or an infantry man or just whatever you want, whatever is needed. Just keep in mind every time you take a clip of ammo with you, that is a clip of ammo that someone made. Okay, guys? So don't don't bring five and die immediately, right? A couple tips here just before I end off the video. It's a good idea to only bring two magazines, okay? Two clips, two mags, two whatever. If you have a gun, two of what it fires, okay? Even veterans only start bringing three at the very max four, okay? So really be conservative. This is not a game where you run around and you know you are alive for a long time. You die really quick. <laughs> And the next thing is, if you do dumb shit, don't call for a medic. Just don't. It's it's entirely okay to run bonsai and do dumb suicide missions and have fun. Like, guys, have fun. Just don't expect us to come save your ass because you did something dumb. It was fun, admittedly. Like, we do some really dumb stuff. And I encourage this. Have fun. Just, you know, live with the consequences. Anyway. With that, I send you guys off to the war, and uh, whatever faction you choose, I wish you good luck.